In 2018, archaeologists discovered the skeletons of two Native American infants. They were both 11,500 years old and members of the same family. These were not regular skeletons. They were well-preserved enough to help scientists understand early humanity. In fact, they include information about the first humans to visit North America. But before we start our story, smash the like button, make sure to subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so you won't miss any new stories. In the early 2000s, anthropology professor Ben Potter started working in Upward Sun River, Alaska. That area of Alaska was once connected to Europe and Africa. This forested location is 50 miles from Fairbanks and only accessible by helicopter. Despite the rough terrain, Potter had a valid cause for excavating there. When Pangaea began to disintegrate, several land corridors remained between the continents. The earliest known humans were born in Africa, but they spread around the world. Beringia served as a bridge between Siberia and Alaska. Many archaeologists believe that the first North American inhabitants crossed that bridge around 34,000 years ago. However, this was only a theory. Many historians assume that early humans reached Beringia, although they don't know who accomplished it. One proposal, known as the Beringian standstill hypothesis, attempts to address this. According to the concept, the ancient Beringians lived alone on Beringia due to the ice and hard environment. If this is accurate, archaeologist Jennifer Raff believes the Beringians are the sole forefathers of all Native Americans. Potter interacted with Native Americans during his excavations. They are typically fiercely protective of their burial grounds. Nonetheless, they recognized the value of Potter's work and offered to assist him. In 2010, Potter and other University of Alaska scholars investigated the Upward Sun River. They found the cremated remains of a three-year-old child. At 11,500 years old, this discovery was extremely rare. Unfortunately, the skeleton was not sufficiently preserved to extract DNA from. Scientists could not even determine the gender. Despite their modest success, Potter and his colleagues refused to give up. They continued excavating in that area for another eight years. Potter and his colleagues, Jose Victor Moreno Meyer and Lasse Winner, got their big break. They discovered an approximately 15,000-year-old burial site in Alaska. Potter and his team unearthed two newborn skeletons. One appeared to be stillborn, while the other was between 6 and 12 weeks old. The two, like the three-year-old, appeared to have been incinerated, with their ashes resting on a fire pit. However, these remains were better kept and easier to identify. The two infants were buried behind several things and covered in red ochre. This ochre, which was most likely used at the funeral, helped to preserve the skeletons. The babies were also buried under a mixture of sand and soil. This high acid mixture is great for preservation. Clearly, the individuals who buried them loved them very much. The stillborn died at 30 weeks gestation, having never had the opportunity to live. The local native community dubbed the girls Zakati Anan Tidigai, Sunrise Girl Child, and Yokanan Tidigai, Dawn Twilight Girl Child. This burial was obviously important to the mourners. Archaeologists found several more objects in the burial, including antlers and spear points. The two girls were buried together in a joint funeral. However, Sunrise Girl, the six-week-old newborn, appeared to be better maintained and provided the foundation for the majority of the DNA result. To investigate the DNA, geneticists had to delve into the mitochondria. Every cell in the body has DNA, and the mitochondria power the cells. Science students remember mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell, because cells die without them. As a result, the scientists require healthy cells to examine which is easier said than done. Old bones are not guaranteed to contain living cells. If scientists want to investigate DNA, they need a bone that is thick enough and well-kept. However, with the two infants, they could. Researchers usually test the petrous bone, which is located at the base of the skull. Because the three-year-old's bones were too destroyed, 
researchers were unable to examine the DNA. Sunrise Girl's ethnicity was confirmed by the first wave of DNA tests conducted at the University of Alaska. According to the findings, she was closely related to Native Americans, but in a unique way. Scientists believe her DNA is significantly older than any previously analyzed remains. In other words, she represents a hitherto unknown genetic community of Native Americans. This previously undiscovered DNA, identified as USR1, dates back at least 20,000 years and possibly up to 34,000 years. According to Eski Villerslev, a professor at the University of Copenhagen and co-author of the study, they are the oldest known Native Americans. It changes our understanding of the timing of events that formed the genetics of Native Americans, Willerslev told CNN Health. Sunrise Girl's DNA supports the Beringian standstill concept. Scientists believe she could be an ancient Beringian, something specialists have only speculated about previously. We think the explanation for this pattern, the one that requires the least movement, was that Native Americans were somewhere in Beringia 20,000 years ago, noted Victor Moreno Meyer, another research author. The initial DNA study was performed on the six-week-old's skull. Geneticists predicted that the second infant will have comparable DNA, but unexpectedly, she didn't. Dawn Twilight Girl, the stillborn, was investigated at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. She had a completely different maternal ancestry than her first cousin, and the two were not linked. Geneticists have divided Native Americans into two groups, Northern and Southern. At some point, the tribe divided, and the Southern Native Americans relocated to South America. The Northern group originated from East Asia and most likely lived in North America including Alaska and Canada. They were all derived from the ancient Beringians, but the split caused variances in their DNA. Simply put, DNA tests revealed that both ladies belonged to two distinct groups. Sunrise Girl belonged to the ancient Beringias, but Dawn Twilight Girl came from a different ethnicity, one more closely related to Northern Native Americans. This raises the question, of how these two groups of people ended up in the same location at the same time. Surprisingly, Sunrise Girl did not belong in either of these categories. This indicates that the ancient Beringians were divided into at least three tribes, if not more. Using demographic modeling, scientists determined that Native Americans left East Asia 36,000 years ago. By 20,000 years ago, this group had divided. But if they separated, why were these two infants buried together? Archaeologists thought that the two groups came together at least once, which explains why the girls were linked. They provided two options for this. The Beringians may have separated before crossing the bridge, only to reconnect later. Alternatively, the Beringians might have divided after crossing. Potter prefers the latter theory. Potter has a notion about how these two groups came together. Perhaps they went down different routes at various times. During an interview with The Atlantic, he suggested that both tribes had crossed Beringia independently. Normally, this notion would appear far-fetched. However, there is some evidence to back this up. In 2017, archaeologists investigated the Bluefish Caves in Canada's Yukon Territory. If this is correct, as Raff believes, then humans reached Beringia at least 24,000 years ago. According to an investigation of these caverns, experts discovered evidence of human cut patterns that were 24,000 years old. It was more than a decade before the two girls were born. Although the finding of the girls confirmed many assumptions, it also created a number of issues. What happened to the Beringians? How did they come to Siberia in the first place? Given the rarity of these findings, these questions are unlikely to be answered anytime soon. Furthermore, not all specialists agree with Potter's beliefs, complicating matters. The biggest objection against this finding is that it is only one finding. Dennis O'Rourke, a geneticist and archeologist, believes that a single sample is insufficient 
to analyze the total human population. We could know something about the extent of diversity in this early Beringian population with greater certainty if we had multiple genomes, O'Rourke told the Smithsonian Magazine. However, finding more than one sample is easier said than done. It's difficult to convey to you how rare they are, Potter told The Atlantic. According to co-researcher Willerslev, prior to this discovery, Scientists could only study this DNA in modern-day Alaskans and Siberians. Without additional samples, no one will know where the Beringians came from. Despite the age of Upward River's burial grounds, archaeologist Brian T. Weigall believes it is too young to understand early humans. The earliest proven trace of human activity in eastern Beringia dates to around 14,000 years ago, Weigall told me making the Upward Sun River site nearly 3,000 years too young to be representative of the initial human colonization of the New World. After Potter's discovery was published in the scientific magazine Nature, many people wondered what happened to the Beringians. We don't know, Potter informed CNN. Again, this question requires additional data to be answered. However, Potter intends to collect DNA samples from nearby residents. Because scientists know what Beringian DNA looks like, they can determine whether the gene still exists in natives. Research has offered a glimpse into the Beringian's life. Potter described them as adept hunters who ate bison, elk, rabbits, squirrels, and birds. They most likely hunted with organized groups. Potter also discovered evidence of salmon exploitation, reaching back 6,000 years indicating that the Beringians presumably fished and traded as well. Potter proposed that the Beringian gene may have integrated into Alaska's indigenous peoples. This is the natural outcome of evolution. It is possible that incoming Athabascan ancestors, who are widespread throughout the region today, replaced or absorbed the ancient Beringians inhabiting that area, according to Potter. If this is accurate, Many people may have Beringian ancestry without realizing it. So, could there be people today carrying the genes of the ancient Beringians without even knowing it? Could this lost civilization have merged into modern societies, leaving traces in our DNA without us realizing it? Science continues its search for answers. And with each new discovery, we get one step closer to understanding humanity's past. Perhaps one day, researchers will uncover more evidence that reveals the fate of the mysterious Beringians. But for now, let's leave you with a thought-provoking question. What if you carry a piece of this lost history within you? Let us know in the comments. Do you think there are still undiscovered secrets about our earliest ancestors? And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an amazing discovery.